Are you using your capo correctly? This is Ikatar. Let's talk about it. What's going on, guys? Ikatar here. On today's episode, we're talking all about the capo. Now, before I begin, it's important to understand that capo is actually an Italian word, okay? Capo comes from the Italian capodastro, which means the head of the fretboard. And as the name implies, a capo is used by string musicians to essentially increase the pitch of their guitar's strings. You're essentially going to move the nut of the guitar up by a set of half steps. And those half steps are commonly accommodated by fret markers on the guitar, but essentially when you capo a guitar, you're increasing the pitch of the instrument up a certain amount of half steps. Now here's the thing, capos come in all shapes and sizes. I have about three different kinds of capos here. We'll go over the pros and cons of each capo, but essentially capos are taking the place of a nut on your fretboard. And so it can provide some issues when tuning or when playing your guitar. So I wanna kinda of go over some common myths and misconceptions on how we use capos and how you can go about using capos the correct way. Now let's talk about the philosophy of a capo first. I see a lot of musicians using a capo because they cannot play the songs they want to play in the correct key. So as an example, you have a you have a song in the key of A flat. Now guitar is in tune to A flat, it's tuned in A sharp tuning, it's tuned in open E essentially. And so what happens is that because the song's in A flat, you guys don't know you guys don't want to play your chords in A flat, you instead want to just capo the first fret and play in G. So that when you play a G, you actually move your G up a fret and it becomes A flat. And that makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. What the capo allows a lot of guitar players to do is play simplified common open chords and chord shapes while playing in the key that they want to play in. Now, I would argue that that isn't the best use for a capo, but it is a use that is used most commonly. So I don't want to bash anyone for using a capo to help them out with a key center that they're not aware of or familiar with. Now, I would argue that capos are more of a stylistic tool. A capo is meant to allow a pair of guitar players or even in recording scenarios to play a guitar in one pitch and then play the same chords in a higher pitch commonly used for you know 12 string substitutions as an example you might have a song in a certain key we'll say you know time in a bottle by jim croce a lot of 70s music used a lot of um, 12 string guitars but you can't get that second octave unless you have a 12 string or you essentially track twice and capo the guitar on the second take but going back to the generic use of capos Capos can be a very helpful tool for a lot of musicians, but I argue it shouldn't be a substitute for understanding key centers. Capos are also used stylistically. You want to hear the sound of open strings. You don't want to play bar chords. And for a lot of acoustic singer-songwriters, capos offer that flexibility of being able to play in their key, as we said, but still retain the use of their open chord structures. But let's not forget about things like cut capos. Cut capos are only cover a portion of the strings in your guitar and are used for a lot of open tuning. So the way we use capos are not limited to one use. There's a broad range of uses and it's important for you guys to understand that when deciding what to buy for a capo for yourself. Now as far as different kinds of capos, there are tons of different capos out there. The most common capo is the spring clamp capo. It essentially has a spring in the back and then when you put it on your guitar, it squeezes the neck of the guitar and depresses the strings for you. I would say this is the most common. You can find these for about 10 to 20 bucks, depending on the quality of your capo. But the problem is, is that a lot of capo players have when playing live sets or gigs is that with spring clamp capos, these capos make your guitar go out of tune. So capos are not a perfect solution, is what I'm trying to say. If you have a decent acoustic guitar, your guitar is set up with a nut and the action is set across the fretboard. Now the issue with guitars and fretboards is that fretboards are not perfect mathematically. So over the course of the span of your neck, you're going to find that some frets are out of tune when you depress them. Now that is simply the nature of guitar, okay? People have an issue with intonation all across the music world, you're not alone. But generally, when we intonate a guitar, we intonate for the 0 and the 12th frets. That means when playing a guitar across all the frets in the middle, you do run the risk of playing guitar a little bit out of tune. Now, 
Now usually that isn't such a big deal with a lot of instruments. When you guys are playing with bands, we don't notice the slightly out of tune-ness of guitars as we play them, especially with five-piece bands and lots of different effects. We don't always notice pitch and intonation when we play our guitars, but generally guitars are tuned zero to 12, and those two points are always in tune, or should be. If your guitar is not intonated properly, you're not gonna have a lot of luck with your capo. The cable's gonna depress the strings and make those things sound more out of tune than they usually would. But out of tuneness when using a capo is very common. So how do we mitigate the issue of tuning stability on a capo? You guys wanna play your open chords in your certain key centers and you'll wanna play it out of tune, especially in the middle of a set. Because if you play, if you slap on a capo in the middle of a set, for example, and your electric guitar player has still has open tuning on his guitar, it might be a huge difference in tonality. There might be a ton of issues with tuning between the two instruments. So how do we mitigate the damage of tuning issues when using a capo? So the best thing to do when dealing with tuning stability with capos is to have a high quality capo. The vast majority of spring tension capos are not going to help you guys out just by the way that they are engineered. Every guitar neck is different, so when a capo wraps around your neck, and they're only really made in one different arc or size, the majority of capos when placed at different frets on your guitar will cause the guitar to be out of tune. So that's not perfectly in tune, but it could suffice for a one-man show. But playing in a three-piece or five-piece band, that could prove to be some issues. So we have other kinds of capos to address the issue of how much tension is wrapped around the neck. And then we have torque capos. So the torque tension capos have a little torque spring in the back that pushes essentially the, that pushes the back and the front of the capo together. Now these aren't perfect either. You have to kind of decide how, what tension is right for your guitar, but these can work well. They are a little bit more of a hassle to finagle, but you can do a lot of good with a torque release capo. Now personally, my favorite capo for use with guitar work, especially guitars with different kinds of necks, is this G7th capo. Now what I like about the G7th capo is that this G7th capo has a number of springs underneath the actual part that lays on your fretboard and it will essentially conform to the shape and width of your neck, allowing for pretty significant tuning stability every time. Now once again, these are a little bit more of a hassle to handle, but it will conform to around the neck of the guitar, giving you a more natural sound and also providing a little bit more tuning stability. Personally, my favorite capo of the list. Now as far as tips and tricks for applying capos to your guitar, so just be aware that when your guitar is engineered, it's always going to be, your strings are always going to be a little bit tighter toward the back of the neck. Right in here is the butter zone. That's going to be the easiest for you guys to press down for the capo to manipulate. But a lot of you guys only need one or two half step increments. So a lot of you guys use your capos on the back half of the fretboard when playing your guitar live. You want to make sure that when you apply the capo, the capo is closest to the fret wire that's closer to the middle of the fretboard. Less tension means less stress in the capo and gives you a little bit more stability in your tuning. Now you'll notice that I'm pretty close to my fret on this. You also wanna make sure that your capo is relatively straight. Even if you skew it just a little bit, it can cause some major tuning issues. So take your time on your set and make sure that this capo is as straight as you can make it and as close to that fret that's closer to the middle of the guitar. Another tip of advice I'd give you guys when dealing with capos is that although you guys like to put capos on your headstock, it doesn't look that great stylistically. And don't forget, if you have too much tension, it might actually cause some marks in your guitar's headstock. So be aware of that when you put capos on your headstock, but that's all kind of minor stuff. So as far as applicable use with the capo, we use the capo a lot for changing key centers while retaining the ability to play open chords. And that is the most common use. That's not to be a crutch to keep you from learning different key centers, but because the guitar is not tuned in A flat, for example, you may want to play fret one in G. That'll just make things a little bit easier for you and your hands. But as far as soloing is concerned, everything is the same. Just because you capo down here doesn't mean that the solos change their transposition. The 
only problem with putting a capo on and soloing on your guitar is that the back half behind the capo isn't able to be played, okay? So the most common use of the tool is used in transposition. So when you transpose to a different key, for example, if you have a song that's in, like I said, a flat, do you know that if you clamp on the first fret, every chord you play, is going to be one half step higher. So for example, if I'm playing in the key of A flat and I'm capoing one, I'm going to be playing in the key of G. The key of A flat. And the other way works in reverse. If you had a song in the key of G and you're like, man, I really want to play that in A flat, G is just out of reach, you keep the same chords, but once again you place your guitar capo on the first fret. And you go ham having fun in the key of A flat. So to sum up, I have some warnings to give you guys when using a capo. First off, capos are not crutches. Capos are used as a helpful tool to get to where you need to go. It shouldn't become your modus operandi for playing guitar. You should be able to play guitar in all kinds of different keys and all kinds of different chord shapes. Don't just put on a capo because you don't know the chord changes for a certain song. Like if you don't know the A major chord or the B minor chord and you're using G and E minor as a substitute and just capoing up, it's not going to really help you. It'll change the pitch of the guitar. It won't actually help you become a better guitar player and you're just going to have to play higher pitched chords and they don't always sound great. Capos are always used sparingly and only a couple of half steps. Don't use a capo higher than the second or third fret. Sometimes tunings in guitars will get a little wonky when you're going up the frets further than the second or third fret. Some of you guys like to capo six and use weird voicings like that for doubling, and that's totally fine. You want to tune that guitar at that high fret at that high fret to give you guys a little bit more leeway in the song. But if you're using a capo, try to stay between the first and the third frets. You don't want to go much higher than that. Change up your chords if you're not finding the key you need. And remember, capos are a tool, not a crutch. Guys, thanks so much for watching my guitar video on capos. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. I make guitar videos all the time. Hopefully this helps you guys get an understanding of how capos are used and some warnings when using them. Capos can be really versatile, but they also can be used to hinder us in our development. So make sure you're using them for the right reasons. Guys, if you have a customized capo or something cool you like to use instead of a capo, maybe pencils and rubber bands, let me know down below. I personally really enjoy my G7th capo. It makes my tunings super consistent on all kinds of guitars, electric and acoustic. Go check them out. I'll put a link down below. Let me know in an Instagram DM what you guys want to hear on the channel. I look forward to seeing you guys next time on iGuitar.